Shabbat Shalom, everyone. We begin this evening with the words of Mizmor Shir Liyom HaShabbat. Let us sing a song of Shabbat. The words can be found on our service sheet at tbeboka.org. Let's join together. Mizmor Shir Liyom HaShabbat Tov Lehodot L'Adonai Ozamir L'Shimcha Elyon Ozamir L'Shimcha Mizmor shir liyom hashabbat Tov lehodot l'adunai Uzamer lishimcha elyon Uzamer lishimcha elyon Lehagir babot kechazdecha Ve'emunacha balehot Aleya sor Shabbat tov lechodot l'adonai Uzameh l'shimcha elyon, uzameh l'shimcha elyon Bismor shir liyom hashabbat tov lechodot l'adonai Uzameh l'shimcha elyon, uzameh l'shimcha elyon Ki simachtan yadonai olecha v'maaseh Everyone, bees more, bees more, sheer the yom hashabat, tov the hodo la donai, was a melish him hyalion, was a melish him hyalion. Bees more, sheer the yom hashabat, tov the hodo la donai, was a melish him hyalion, was a melish him hyalion. Shabbat Shalom and happy end of Hanukkah and entering into Shabbat. In 1911, the Mona Lisa at the Louvre in Paris was stolen. Here's the thing you need to understand. Until that time that it was stolen, no one really cared much about the Mona Lisa. It wasn't even the most popular painting in the gallery that it was in at the Louvre. What happened is one night on a Sunday night, which was a big social night in Paris, three men dressed in white as all the workers dressed at the Louvre and hid in an art supply closet overnight. And Monday morning, when much of Paris had partied Sunday night and was groggy waking up, the three men took the Mona Lisa that was hanging on four simple hooks, 200 pounds of painting and frame and glass, and whisked it away. For 28 months, it was nowhere to be found. And then all of a sudden, a man emerged trying to sell it. And in a sting operation, he was captured. You haven't heard much about this because World War I broke out soon after, and the whole story was forgotten. But out of this dark and awful story, the Mona Lisa emerged as a beautiful classic. And I have no doubt that many of you, if you have visited the Louvre, made that beeline to the Mona Lisa as we do when we get to a site like that. And there are dozens and dozens of people in front of it now covered in glass. And so out of something dark and bad, we now celebrate this beautiful painting. And it is powerful to think about beautiful things coming out of difficult situations. I found this Hanukkah to be this way as well. I found that at these difficult times, that the real essence of Hanukkah, of coming together to say prayers, of worshiping, of really reflecting on the miracle, of bringing light in the darkest days, emerged immensely. It wasn't the materialism of the holiday that rose to the, crop, to the top, like cream, what rose to the top is the beauty and the connectiveness. I lit Hanukkah candles with family all over the place on Zoom, something we would have never done in normal times. 
Even our Torah portion reflects this notion that out of something low and dark and difficult can come something helpful and powerful and beautiful. Joseph is the lowliest man in Egypt, in prison, in a pit below ground, and yet the highest man in the land, Pharaoh, needs Joseph's help in order to interpret his dreams and save Egypt from famine. And this week, I have been obsessed more than anything with hearing about the vaccine, that in this time when we see massive numbers of infected and less but still stirring difficult numbers of those who have passed away from COVID, I found all my attention directed to the tip of the needle of the vaccine. What was it like to find hope in the most minute, tiny place, the tip of the needle? And so I was curious that something powerful and beautiful, how could it come out of this dark time? And so I called our congregant, Rachel Garan. She is an amazing human being. She is the head of epidemiology and infectious disease in the Memorial Healthcare System and a member of Temple Bethel and just an incredible woman. And I called her and I said, what it, did it feel like to think about the tip of that needle? And first she marveled at what it was like to watch her boss get this vaccine and how she was really at a moment that was a lifetime changing event. And then I asked, what were you thinking about when you saw the tip of the needle go into your arm? She said, Disney and parties and concerts and coming together again, that in that most minute space that we could find hope in that beautiful moment was so powerful. I got the chills when she said it, I got the chills again. And I think it is a reminder as we end Hanukkah that the hope and the joy and the beauty of the holiday does not have to go away. Instead, it stays with us and we can find hope in that minute space, even at the tip of a needle. Shabbat Shalom. It is my pleasure at this time to bring a family of hope and a bat mitzvah of hope, an incredible person with us to join us in leading our Shabbat candle lighting and kiddush this evening. We invite our bat mitzvah, Eliana Cohen, and her parents, Cantor Michelle and Yaniv, along with her sister, Leora, who's there, to lead us in candle lighting and kiddush for Shabbat. Oh, wait, oh, wrong one. <laughs> Sorry. As these Shabbat candles give light to all who behold them, so may we, by our lives, give light to all who behold us, as their brightness reminds us of the generations of Israel who have kindled light. So may we, in our own day, be among those who kindle light. on the seventh day from all the work that God had done. And God blessed the seventh day and declared it holy, because on it God ceased from all the work of creation that God had done.
as if there wasn't enough excitement with Eliana becoming bat mitzvah this weekend and enjoying her kiddush wine. In addition, it is Canner Michelle and Yaniv's anniversary as well. Yay! <laughs> Michelle's office. There is a picture, I think it's from the early days when her and Yaniv was, were dating, and there is a smile on her face that is so bright and so beautiful. And after we bless them, we're going to sing Lacha Dodi. And I was thinking that every bride and every groom should greet one another as they walk down the aisle. That is that same smile that is on Michelle's face in that picture for her beloved Yaniv. And that smile after all these years and these kids and all that life throws our way has not gone away at all. I think it is even magnified even more. And so I want to ask you to repeat again those words that you said under the chuppah all those years ago. And I want to remind you that in saying these words that the ata and the at at a hey, he, when we say ata, as if God's presence dwells in the two yous that exist, the you of Yaniv and the you of Michelle. So Yaniv, if you'll repeat after me, Hareat Ata, Hareat, Hareat, Mikudash Li, and Michelle, if you will repeat after me, Hareat Ata, Mikudash Li, and give each other a big kiss as we want to give you the priestly blessing that asks for God's presence in the life of your family always, that those smiles never go away. We say, Yivarecha Adonai Vayishmarecha. May God bless you and keep you. May God's light shine upon you and be good to you. Yisana Pravalecha Vayasemlecha Shalom. May God's face always point towards you and grant you the gifts of happiness, wholeness, and peace. And we say, Amen and Mazel Tov. 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 Mazel Mazel Tov. We talk about that bride and groom as we do a wedding blessing and the smiles that we should greet those we love with who we are marrying under the chuppah, but it is with just as much intensity and beauty that we welcome in the Sabbath bride with smiles, finding shalom, finding peace, finding beauty in her presence. We sing verses 1, 2, 5, and 9 of Lachadodi as we welcome the Sabbath bride.
ידברי, כבוד אדוני עלייך נגלה. And if you're able, please rise and face the door to greet the Shabbat bride. Boi v'shalom, ha'teret b'ala, gam b'simcha v'tzolam. Are you listening to my prayer? Can you hear my voice? Can you understand? Am I awake? Am I prepared? Baruchu et Adonai HaMevorach Baruch Adonai HaMevorach Le'olam v'ahed Le'olam v'ahed Yadalai 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 Baruch Ata Adonai Eloheinu Melech HaOlam, Asher Bidvaro Ma'ariv Aravim, Bechokma Poteach She'arim, Uvitvuna Mishane Itim, Umachalif Et Hazmanim, Umesaderet HaKochavim, Bemishmerotehem Barakia Kirtsono, Borei Yom Valayla, Golel Or Mitne Choshech, Bechoshech Mitne Or. ומעביר יום ומבין לילה, ומבדיל בין יום ובין לילה, אדוני צבאות שמו אל חי וקיים. תמיד ימלוך עלינו לעולם ועד, ברוך אתה אדוני המעריב ערבי.
as we take a moment now, ground yourself, prepare yourself, allow yourself to go into the deepest recesses of your being and your soul. Go to the place where your dreams lie. Go to the place where your heart rests. Go to the place where your light is kindled. Go to the place where you are at peace and listen. Shema Yisrael Adonai Eloheinu Adonai Echad Baruch Shem Kivod Mahuto Le'olam va'et Ve'ahavta het Adonai Elohecha Be'chol levavcha u'v'chol nafshecha u'v'chol me'odecha Ve'hayu harvarim ha'ele Asher anochi mitzavecha Hayom al levavecha Vishinanta ham levanecha Vidibarta baham Vishivtecha bevetecha Uvlechtecha vaterech Uvshokbecha uvkumecha Ukshart ham lehot al yadecha Vehayula totafot vein ein necha Uchtafta ham mamazuzot betecha Uvisharecha Leman tizkeru Vasitem et kol mitzvotai Vitem kidoshim lelohechem Ani Adonai Elohechem Asher hoteiti etchem Me'eretz mitzrayim Lichiot lachem lelohim Ani Adonai Elohim. This week's Torah portion is about dreams. It is about how Joseph was called to Pharaoh's chamber to interpret his dreams and then to take those dreams and to turn them into a reality that would save not only all of Egypt, but Joseph's own family from whom he was estranged. And so when we think about dreams, we think about how hard it is sometimes to dream. I was given an exercise by a consultant the Temple is working with, Nancy Prophet, this week, where she asked me to write down 50 dreams. 50 dreams. 50 dreams of things that I have always dreamed of. And it took a while. I mean, there are certain obvious things that I dream about, but then there were the things that by being forced to dream, by being asked to dream, expanded my consciousness of the possible. The writer Peter Block in his book, The Answer to How is Yes, talks about how the worst thing that you can do when someone is talking about their dreams is say, well, how are you gonna do that? Well, I don't know if that's possible, but think about, how many times in the course of history someone broached the idea of a dream that seemed impossible and then it was possible. Think about when there were those who said, I wonder if I could harness the power of electricity and our entire world now is powered by electricity. There were those who wondered if a human being could build a machine that could fly. And now, Going to the moon and into outer space is sort of a ho-hum kind of activity. There were those who dreamed about using circuitry in order to create machines that could compute math problems at amazing speeds. And now the computer is so much ingrained in our very being. There are those who literally carry computers inside their own bodies. More than 100 years ago, Theodore Herzl had a dream that the Jewish people could reclaim their ancient homeland into a modern Jewish state. And 50 years later, that dream became reality in the birth of the modern state of Israel. 
Im tirtsu enzo agada. If you will it, then it is no dream. And so we hold on to our dreams as the Maccabees did in ancient times, as we do in our own day, to free us from the constraints of what we think is possible, to lead us to a broad expanse of what could be if we don't let go of those dreams. Light, the spark of divine energy from which life itself is born, the ember that burns inside us, kindled by the Holy One at the dawn of existence and implanted within us from the first moment, our eyes open to the world. Light, the radiance that shines from the core of our spirit, 
the spark of ingenuity and insight fanned into flame by wonder each moment we step back in awe and thanksgiving at the wonder of our existence. Light, the glow of hope in the depths of the darkness, the beacon toward which we aim when all around is darkness and despair creeps into the soul that illumines our steps and leads us to tomorrow, the wholeness to you. The door a tamborito lam. Bain you vain, bain Israel, O tile o lam, O tile o lam. Veshamru, bain Israel, et a shabbat. La sorte et a shabbat. The door a tamborito lam. ourselves as we enter into the holy space of God's court and together we rise so that we can have that intimate moment of meeting as we embrace the words of the tefillah. Please rise. Adonai sefatai tiftahu fi agit hilatecha Adonai, open up my lips that my mouth may declare your praise. Baruch Adonai, Eloheinu, Elohei Avotinu Vimotenu, Elohei Avraham, Elohei Yitzchak, Elohei Yaakov, Elohei Sarah, Elohei Rivka, Elohei Rachel, Elohei Leha. Ha el hagado hagibor vahanora el hel yon gomel chasadim tovim vikone hakoh vizocher chasya vot vimahot who may be gula live nefenehem le maan shemo beahava melechose umoshia umagin baruch Adonai, Magin Abraham, Vezrat Sarah, Atagi Boy Leolam Adonai, Mechaye Hakohun La Tarab Lehoshia, Mashiv Haru Wahumorid Hagashem. Mechakel Chayim Bechesed, Mechaye Hako Berachamim Rabim, So Mech Noflim Verofecholim, Umati Rasurim, Umekaye Munatoli Shene Yafar, Micha Mocha Baal Givurot, 
ומידעו מהלך, מלך במית ומחיים, ומצמיח ישוע, ונאמן אתה להחיות הכל. ברוך אתה אדוני מחיי הכל. אתה קדוש ושמך קדוש וקדושי בכל יום יהללו חסלע ברוך אתה אדוני האל הקדוש In the Torah portion this week we learn how Joseph is able to redeem himself the people of Egypt and his own family because of his ability to dream. But it isn't his dream that liberates them. It's Pharaoh's dream. And what's remarkable is that what allows the Israelites to survive, what allows the people of Egypt to survive is the ability of Joseph not to hold so hard on to his own dream. but to listen very carefully to someone else's dreams. So often we think that it's our dreams that are the only ones that matter. And that's what Joseph's brothers thought. They thought that when Joseph was talking about his dreams, they didn't want to know about his dreams. They didn't like his dreams. They didn't want his dreams to come true. And they would do anything they could to thwart his dreams from ever becoming reality. And yet it was Joseph's dreams that he would one day rule over them that, as we learn in this week's Torah portion, is what saved their life. And it was Joseph's ability to listen to the Egyptian dream, the dream that was not his, the dreams of another people, the dreams of another ruler that allowed the entire project of Judaism to prosper. But his family and the entire people of Egypt would be saved from famine. In our day and age, we get very much locked into our own dreams. We become so sure that what our dreams are are the only dreams that matter, and that the dreams that somebody else has are to be vanquished or to be stopped or to be thwarted in some way, shape or form, no matter what the cost is, no matter what the stakes are, no matter what it does to us to stop listening to someone else's dream. But if we think about how we need to move forward from this practice and difficult time in our history, it will be because we realize that there needs to be room in our consciousness and our world for more than one dream. And that we learn that the more we are able to listen and listen hard and listen carefully with an open heart and an open mind to the dreams that someone else may utter, we may find that it is those dreams that need to become our own and those perspectives that we need to see, those truths we need to hear, and those realities we need to come together to make real in our world. We take some time now for silent prayer and meditation. give you 
Shabbat shalom, everyone. It is a pleasure to be with everyone this evening, especially with Randy and Dan, Paul Heskins. Randy and Dan, you have been members of our community officially only for a short period of time, just a little bit over a year. But in that year, the two of you have illustrated your commitment to each other in the way that you've committed to our community. And I've had so much pleasure in spending time with you, the two of you together, and time with the two of you individually over this past year to get to know your sense of passion for the Jewish people, your sense of commitment to your family, and ultimately when you reach a milestone of a 40th wedding anniversary, that sense of commitment to loving and supporting each other through the thick and thin that this world can throw at us continues to shine through. And so as we gather on this evening to offer you a blessing on your 40th anniversary, I'm going to ask you a very simple question. Randy, knowing everything that you know about Dan after these 40 plus years, do you once again to commit to walk with him as his partner in your commitment to each other, to your family, and to our people and our world? Of course. And Dan, knowing what you know about Randy, do you once again commit to walking this world as her partner, committed, committed to each other, to your family, to our people, and to the world? Absolutely, and without doubt. And so I say to the two of you in that spirit, may the God who blessed our ancestors continue to bless you with all of the joy and all the happiness that you've had. And may the joy and the happiness that you've had thus far pale in comparison to the joy that lies before you. Mazal tov to both of you. Simin tovu, mazel tovu, mazel tovu, simin tovu, simin tovu, mazel tovu, mazel tovu, simin tovu, simin tovu, mazel tovu, mazel tovu, simin tovu. Yeah, lanu. Shabbat shalom, everyone. This evening, as we make our way out of the festival of Hanukkah and back into just regular old Shabbat, which is always wonderful. We're thinking this evening about how is it that we can carry on the spirit of the miracle. Of course, the miracle of Hanukkah took place dozens of centuries ago. And when we celebrate Hanukkah, we remember the miracle of the Hasmonean revolt and the miracle of the oil that lasted. But the light that we lit over the past eight nights we have tried to keep that light reflecting and reverberating through those generations. We celebrate Hanukkah at the darkest time of the year. We know that the winter solstice is upon us in just a couple of days and the moon is quite small at this time. We live in a darkened world right now, a world darkened by this pandemic and the fact that so many of us are away from the people that we love. We are stuck in our homes, lucky if we have loved ones with whom we live but distant from everyone else around us. And so at this, the darkest time of the year with the darkness of the pandemic still weighing upon us, it is appropriate to wonder what might the miracles be that lay ahead of us. As Rabbi Mates mentioned at the beginning of services tonight, one of those miracles was a vaccine that rolled out into the community this week. And 
We learned just as Shabbat was beginning, another vaccine was approved this evening for use in the community as well. That certainly is a miracle that we look forward to sharing as we go forward. But there's also, in addition to the science and everything, another miracle that we are experiencing right now, at least when we're privileged to be a part of it, is the miracle of how we are doing our best to take care of one another. And the miracle of people who put their own interests to the side to support those in need around them. And I mention that tonight because it is in some way part of the lesson of Parshat Miketz, the portion that we read this evening. In addition to the dreams and the hopes that we get to at the end of the portion, in the middle of the portion we are reminded of the brotherly strife that has infected this family. We think particularly of the brother Judah. Judah, who had the original idea to kill his brother Joseph because he was so smarmy and arrogant and all of those things. But that was Judah's original intention. It took the older brother, Reuben, to step in and say, well, let's not kill him. Let's just throw him in a pit and see what happens. Oh, and then we can sell him to these wandering Ishmaelites who come by. In this Torah portion, Judah has learned from his mistakes. Judah has deep concern for the younger brother, Benjamin, when the viceroy of Pharaoh calls Benjamin to appear before him. The brothers were all worried what the fate of Benjamin might be. Could it be that he could be imprisoned or even worse? Now, of course, the brothers didn't know that that viceroy of Pharaoh was another one of their brothers, Joseph. And when we think about the idea of the brothers wondering how they could take care of one another, it reminds us of one of the very first questions that was asked in the Torah. Hashomer achi anochi. Am I my brother's keeper? The words that Cain so, so challengingly asked to God when God asked Cain where his brother Abel had gone, knowing that Cain had killed him. Am I my brother's keeper? Am I responsible for the goodwill of my fellow human beings around me? The lesson that Judah learned throughout his lifetime from his original behavior toward Joseph, towards his eventual concern for Benjamin, and of course the family reunification, the answer to that question is, of course. Of course we are each other's keepers. Of course we have responsibilities that extend beyond just what I want to do for myself in any given moment. That is in part what has made the, pan the, the pandemic so challenging. What's made this pandemic so challenging is not just that I am fearful for my own health, although each of us are certainly have the right to be, but the complicating factor that with this asymptomatic virus, that my behavior could inadvertently and unbeknownst to me affect the health of others as well. Hashomer achi anochi, am I my brother's keeper? That's why I wear a mask. That's what makes masks different than seatbelts, for example. I put on a seatbelt to keep myself safe. I've been asked to put on a mask, yes, to keep myself safe, but even more, even more powerfully to keep everybody else around me safe as well. In this time, in this moment, we are all staying at home so that we can guard our brothers, we can guard our sisters, we can guard our fellow community members. We can guard our loved ones and the strangers with whom and among whom we live. We stay home that we might guard them. With the beauty and the miracle of the vaccine now at the threshold of our door, we could feel like the end is nigh, like we are almost through the tunnel of this pandemic. But there have been many pieces that I have read in the news this week and in magazines reminding us that while the end might be getting closer and we might be nearing the beginning of the end, we are still in the midst of this terrible pandemic. And we ought not let our guard down in this moment. In this moment when so many of us feel the pull to be around family because of the holiday season. When we feel like how bad could it be in the next couple of weeks, the answer is it could still get very bad. But... When we realize that it's just a few short months left until things will really take a meaningful change, then in just a couple of short months, we will come out of the darkness of the winter, out of the darkness of the pandemic, and be able to really embrace our brothers and our sisters and our friends and our loved ones in meaningful ways. Now is the time to remind ourselves, Hashomer Achi Anochi, 
I am my brother's keeper. I am my sister's keeper. And I ask all of you to feel and think the same way. Let's do what we can over these next few months so that we are all alive to receive the vaccine when it becomes available to us. Let us all be there to continue the miracle of the amazing scientific innovations that have been done over the past nine months. Let us be able to gather at a point in the future we can, where we can celebrate how that miracle not only continues, but allows us to continue in strength and good health as well. Shabbat Shalom. As we think of strength and good health, we pray now for those in our community who are in need of strength and good health, those who are suffering from illness or injury. And we say, May the God who blessed our ancestors, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, Sarah, Rebecca, Rachel, and Leah, bring the gift of refuah shlema, of healing of mind and body and spirit, to those in our families and our communities who are in need of healing this evening. And tonight we think of and pray for Samuel Agrinal, Perry Bear, Fred Belkin, Barbara Bernardi, Margie Berman Block, Kathleen Bauer Sox, Lawrence Bullman, Sharon Dakota, Lynn Edinger, Norman Eidenberg, Arnold Erne, Estelle Erne, Eileen Feinerman, Peter Feldman, Rhonda Findlay, Marty Framowitz, Bob Geller, Larry Guise, Nate Goldberg, Jake Goldstein, Hannah Hoffman, Keith Homer, Olivia Jones, Michelle Cahan, Marcos Kaplan, Diana Katz, Norman Kaufman, Florence Koish, Diana Koch, Judy Kornitsky, Mickey Cutler, Lori Mariano, Jesso Martins, Gerald Mielli, Shirley Ann Myers, Victoria Nelson, Lisa Nyron, Ellen Oknowski, Dan Perez, Maurice Plow, Ronald Rao, Gustavo Ribeiro, Ronald Rohan, Ellen Romberg, Cynthia Romero, Melissa Rose, Eileen Rosenbaum, Alan Rosenfeld, Sharon Rubin, Ruth Moriah, Bashoshana Miriam, Bonnie Schaefer, Mark Shaw, Lori Schaefer, Bernice Shore, Eileen Shore, Len Sirowitz, Mickey Sirowitz, Lawrence Spitz, Michael Sprinzen, Gary Stromberg, Martin Surnamer, Mitchell Wachtel, Audrey Weinberg, Ava Marie Wildforster, Ellie Weiss, Jeff Wissett, Israel Yamuder, Linda Yankow, and Joel Zieger. As we say of them, Baruch Atadonai Rafeha Cholim, we praise you, Adonai, who helps bring healing to the sick. <laughs> Bless those in need of healing with refuah shalema, the renewal of body, the renewal of spirit, and let us say amen. And if you are able, please rise for the Elenu. Aleinu l'shabeach la'adon hakol L'atet k'tu ila l'yotzer b'reshit Sh'elo asanu k'go yeha ratzot V'lo husamanu k'mishpachot adama Sh'elo sam chelkenu k'ahem V'go hara aleinu k'go hamonam V'anachnu turn now to those whom we have lost, those whose lives have left us a legacy of love and understanding, of wisdom and goodness, whose memories we cherish each and every day, and whose spirits are woven into the fabric of our family and our lives. 
On this Shabbat, we remember on the anniversary of their passing their yard sites, Gertrude S. Aaron, Myra April, Samuel Berkman, Robert Blaschek, Rosalind Block, Simcha Chasen, Morris Tim Clayman, Phyllis Cohen, Martin David, Melvin Diamond, Kenneth Dickerman, Charles Dickerman, Corey Dietz, Marion Epstein, Gertrude File, Irving Finkelstein, Nathan Fisher, Antonio Fresses, Julius Friedlander, Joseph Gadan, Joseph Goldstein, Daniel Goldstein, Stanley Goodman, Nettie Greenbaum, Esther Greenberg, Sylvia Grossman, Jerry Herman, Francis Sitzion Gracia, Regina Jacobson, Milton H. Josias, Charles M. Kahn, Florence Kaufelt, Daniel Keisman, Lila Kurness, Ethel Klausner, Ann Weinstein Koch, Edith Kramer, Florence Kushner, Stanley Cutler, Sylvia Lake, Lena Lapidus, Mel Levine, Louis Levy, Augusta B. London, Lawrence Long, Sally Mackler, Oscar Mayer, Marilyn Marcus, Ari Henry Melzer, Erwin Mechik, Fred Morgan, Greta Nathan, Bernard Oatley, Philip Parmet, Vivian Peck, Howard Pollinger, Helen Poteska, Florence Rice, Leon Rosenberg, Gertrude Rosenthal, Morris Rubenstein, Jerry Samuels, Bernard Schnee, Bessie Schuster, Hildegard Schwartz, Pearl Siegel, Richard Siemens, Lillian Isaac Stein, Robert Strent, Stephen Throne, Frank Teitelman, Miriam Turetsky, Irving Philip Unical, Jerome Aaron Weinberg, Norman Worth, and Al Swick. We add with soaring hearts those who relate to rest in recent days whose memories we cherish in the 30 days of Shaloshim. Stuart Hershey, Allison Joe Golden, Risha Levy, Howard Leshman, Bradley Stone, Dahlia Kalai, Samuel Gitlin, Jetta Gadima DeLove, Jerry Tamarkin, Alvin Dern, Ray Braunstein, Debbie Malaga, Ed Hames, J. Michael Graff, Sally Belson, Jacob Zwechsler, and Rennie Steinberg. Remember all whom you carry also in your heart as together we give God thanks for the gift of life with the words of Kaddish. Together we say, Yitgadal v'yitkadash shemei rabah. V'alma divrach hirute v'yam lich malchute. V'chaye chon v'yome chon v'chaye d'chol v'et Yisrael. V'agala u'vizman kariv v'imru amen. Yehe shemei rabah mevorach le'olam u'ame omaya. Yit barach vish tabach vit paar vit romam vit nase. Vit hadar vit ale vit halal shame de kucha brihu. De ela min kol bir hata vishirata. Tush be hata venechemata. De amiran be alma vi imru amen. Yehe shalama raba min shemaya ve hayim. Alenu ve al kol yisrael vi imru amen. O se shalom bim romav. We are say shalom, aleinu ve al kol Yisrael, the imru, amen. May the one who makes peace in the high heavens grant peace to us, to all Israel, and to all who mourn, and we say amen. Now we ask you, join, sing as loud as you want. You're at home, it doesn't matter, but we can feel the energy of your spirit. We conclude our services singing, O se shalom, let's all join together. Say shalom, be Roma. Who ya are shalom, Malenu? They are called Israel. They are called your sweet heaven. Be Roo, Amen. Send a special mazel tov to Eliana Cohen on her bat mitzvah tomorrow. Special mazel tov to her parents, our wonderful cantorial soloist Michelle and Yaniv Cohen. 
not simply on the wonderful Simcha for their daughter, but also on their wedding anniversary. So mazel tov to you. So much to celebrate this weekend. We also want to send a special mazel to Randy and Dan Paul Heskins on the occasion of their 40th wedding anniversary. It's been a long road from Alpine, New Jersey to our community, but we're so glad that that road has led you together to celebrate Shabbat and to this wonderful milestone together. Tomorrow morning, join me for Torah study at 9.30 a.m. You can find the link at Temple's website, www.tbeboca.org. Click on Virtual Temple Bethel, and you'll find the links there to all of the programs that you can enjoy uh, virtually and safely from your home at Temple Bethel. We encourage you to look on that website also for a link to the Giving Tree, the wonderful project that we engage in that we have used for so many years to bring that holiday light and spirit to those who are of limited means so that they can have the joy of holiday gifts. We serve thousands of households and it's not too late for you to support the Giving Tree. We hope that you will join that wonderful experience. But also we want you to look on the website for our new initiative, Beth L Circles, our small group initiatives that will allow you to bond with other congregants around shared passions and interests, things that you want to learn or explore or share together. More information can be found by looking on the website or call the temple, 561-391-8900. As always, we find ourselves uh, sometimes in places we never imagined, where perhaps we are food insecure or we're not sure we can pay the rent or the mortgage or we're not sure that we're going to have enough to make ends meet. Do not sit in alone with your problems. Let the community be there to help you. If you need help, call Temple Bethel, 561-391-8900. No one should go hungry. No one should be insecure. No one should wonder whether they have safety or shelter. We want to make sure that we are there to help everybody who is in need. Now we invite you to join me as we conclude our Shabbat service with, of course, the motzi. My dog is very excited. Ha motzi lechem in haaretz, we give thanks to God for bread. Publix too. Our voices rise in song together as our joyful prayer is said. Baruch atadonai, Eloheinu melech haolam, ha motzi lechem in haaretz, amen. Mm. Shabbat shalom.